The internet is a worldwide collection of millions of computers and networks of all sizes. The term internet is derived from the term internetworking, which means connecting networks. Simply put, the internet is a network of networks. The internet started in 1969 as a U.S. Department of Defense project called the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, or ARPANET. The connected four nodes, the University of California at Los Angeles, the University of California at Santa Barbara, Stanford Research Institute, and Stanford University in California, and the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. Other nodes, composed of computer networks from universities and government laboratories, were added to the network later. In 1987, ARPANET evolved into the National Science Foundation Network, which was considered the first internet backbone. The Internet Backbone is a foundation network linked with fiber optic cables that can support very high bandwidth. The World Wide Web, the Web, changed the Internet in 1989 by introducing a graphical interface into the largely text-based Internet. The Web organizes information by using hypermedia, meaning documents that include embedded references to audio, text, images, video, and other documents. Composed of billions of hypermedia documents, the web constitutes a large portion of the internet. The embedded references in hypermedia documents are called hypertext. They consist of links users can click to follow a particular thread. Any computer that stores hypermedia documents and makes them available to other computers on the internet is called a server or web server, and computers requesting these documents are called clients. The most exciting feature of the web is that hypermedia documents can be stored anywhere in the world, so users can jump from one site in the United States to a site in Paris, France in just a few milliseconds. Domain names such as IBM.com or WhiteHouse.gov are unique identifiers of computer or network addresses on the internet. When information is transferred from one network to another, domain names are converted to IP addresses by the Domain Name System DNS protocol. You see domain names used in Uniform Resource Locators URLs, also called Universal Resource Locators, to identify a web page. A URL is the address of a document or a site on the internet. The TLD denotes the type of organization or country the address specifies. Many new GTLDs have been proposed, including .aero, aviation industry, .museum, .law, and .store. In addition, most countries have geographic domains. These CCTLDs include .au for Australia, .ca for Canada, .fr for France, .jp for Japan, and .uk for the United Kingdom. Now, internet address names can end with almost any word in any language, giving organizations around the world the opportunity to market their brands, products, or causes in new and creative ways. There are several methods for connecting to a network, including the internet. These methods include dial-up, cable modems, as well as digital subscriber lines, DSLs. Organizations often use T1 or T3 lines. These are provided by their telephone company and are capable of transporting the equivalent of 24 conventional telephone lines using only two pairs of copper wires. T1 uses two pair of copper wires to carry 24 simultaneous conversations called channels and has one transmission. Navigational tools are used to travel from website to website, as in surf the internet. Originally, internet users used text-based commands for simple tasks, such as downloading files or sending emails. The graphical browsers changed all this by providing menus and graphics-based tools that allowed users to point and click. Typically, these browsers have menu options you've seen in word processing programs such as File, Edit, and Help. A search engine, such as Google, Bing, or Ask, is an information system that enables users to retrieve data from the web by using search terms. In a traditional Google search, users type in keywords and Google displays the most relevant web pages based on mostly on the number of times those web pages have been linked to. 
Another type of search, Google Voice Search, or Search by Voice, has become popular on mobile devices. There are two kinds of directories on the web. The first is the automated, or crawler-based directory that search engines use. It creates indexes of search terms and collects these terms automatically by using crawlers. The second type of directory is the human-powered directory. If you want your web page to be listed in a search engine's results, you have to manually submit keywords to provide a human-powered directory. The main difference is that if your web page changes, the directory does not have the updated content until you submit changes to the directory. Color-based directories are based on index terms, such as the phone book's white pages are based on the last name and the first names of people. Popular services include email, news groups and discussion groups, instant messaging, and internet telephony. Email is one of the most widely used services on the internet. In addition to personal use, many organizations use email for product announcements, payment confirmations, and newsletters. There are two main types of email. Web-based email enables you to access your email account from any computer and, in some cases, store your emails on a web server. The internet serves millions of people with diverse backgrounds and interests. Discussion groups and news groups are a great way for people with similar interests to find one another. News groups are typically more general in nature and can cover any topic. They allow people to get together for fun or business purposes. Internet Relay Chat, IRC, enables users in chat rooms to exchange text messages with people in other locations in real time. Instant Messaging is a service for communicating with others via a private chat room on the internet. Internet Telephony is using the internet rather than the telephone network to exchange spoken conversations. The protocol used for this capability is Voice Over Internet Protocol, or VOIP. To use VOIP, you need a high-speed internet connection and usually a microphone or headset. VOIP is also used to route traffic, starting and ending in conventional public switch telephone network phones. Web applications can be used with minimum costs. Let's take a look at how a variety of service industries use web applications. The tourism and travel industry has benefited from e-commerce and web applications. Many major publishers in the United States and Europe have websites that offer descriptions of forthcoming books, sample chapters, online ordering, and search features for looking up books on certain topics or by certain authors. Most universities have websites with information about departments, programs, faculty, and academic resources. Real estate websites provide millions of up-to-date listings for homes for sale. Employment services are widely available on the internet. Almost all U.S. and Canadian banks and credit unions and many others worldwide offer online banking services and use email to communicate with customers and send account statements and financial reports. Many vendors distribute software on the internet, as well as drivers and patches. With patient records stored on the internet, healthcare workers can order lab tests and prescriptions, admit patients to the hospital, and refer patients to other physicians more easily. Political sites are a helpful tool for announcing candidates' platforms, publicizing their voting records, posting notices of upcoming appearances and debates, and even raising campaign funds. Some claim the internet has helped empower voters to re revitalize the democratic process through web applications like these. Intranets are also called corporate portals. You might wonder what the difference is between a company's website and its internet. The main difference is that the company website is usually public and the intranet is for internal use only by employees. An intranet uses internet technology to solve organizational problems that have been solved in the past by proprietary databases, groupware, scheduling, and workflow applications. 
In a typical intranet configuration, users in the organization can access all web servers, but the system administrator must define each user's level of access. Departmental web servers can be used to host websites. For example, the Human Resources Department might have a separate website containing information that employees need to access frequently, such as benefits information or 401k records. Any user can access the internet, but access to an intranet is only for certain users and must be approved. Despite the differences between internet and intranets, both use the same protocol, and both use browsers for accessing information. An advantage of an intranet is that because the organization can control which browser is used, it can specify a browser that supports technologies the organization uses, such as internet technology or video conferencing. Intranets can also help organizations move from a calendar or schedule-based document publishing strategy to one that is based on the events or needs. Intranets reduce the cost and time of document production as well. An extranet connects intranets of business partners so communication between organizations or between customers or consumers is possible. Extranets are considered a type of interorganizational systems IOS. These systems facilitate information exchange among business partners. Some organizations allow customers and business partners to access their intranets for specific purposes. Successful extranet requires a comprehensive security system and management control. Web 2.0 refers to the trend towards web applications that are more interactive than traditional web applications. Computers, not their users, will perform the tedious work involved in finding, combining, and acting upon information on the web. Web 3.0, on the other hand, focuses on intelligent web applications using various artificial intelligence technologies. These include natural language processing, artificial networks, and intelligent agents. A blog is a journal or newsletter that is updated frequently and intended for the general public. Blogs reflect the author's personalities and often include philosophical reactions and opinions on social or political issues. There are also blogs on websites that are dedicated to particular topics or organizations. These are periodically updated with the latest news and views. A wiki is a type of website that allows users to add, delete, and sometimes modify content. One of the best known examples is the online encyclopedia, Wikipedia. Corporate wikis are used for a variety of purposes, such as posting news about product development. Social networking refers to a broad class of websites and services that allow users to connect with friends, family, and colleagues online, as well as meet people with similar interests or hobbies. RSS is a subscription service, and new content from websites you have selected is delivered via a feed reader. A podcast is an electronic audio file, such as an MP3 file, that's been posted on the web for users to download to their mobile devices or even their computers. Recent development is Internet 2 or i2. It's a network of networks in which billions of connections create unparalleled opportunities and challenges. Although IOE refers to all the connections that would be made, the Internet of Things, IOT, refers to the physical objects that are connected to the Internet and therefore to all other physical objects. Because of the popularity and the fast growth of IOT projects, soon we may see a new IT job called the Chief IOT Officer. Consumers and businesses will save money by preserving energy when they control their room temperatures on-site or remotely through smart devices, while companies will save time and money on labor due to automation.
In general, the Internet of Everything could help solve many 21st century problems, such as hunger, water pollution, adverse climate change, and increasing energy costs. Individuals, businesses, and governments around the globe will benefit from IOE technology. Security, privacy, and reliability will play a major role in the success of this technology as it does for any network. There needs to be close coordination and communication among the three key players to protect the privacy and integrity of information that's being shared in this global network. The Internet of Me refers to a subset and personalized internet that gathers and processes personalized information for a given user from the entire internet, including the IoT devices. The experience could be a search result, receiving the news that a user likes, or receiving personalized medical care.